Hello everyone, so here I have a PS4 and uh, the issue is the HDMI port's not working. You can see that it's all scratched up and there are actually uh, a couple pins that are broken in, in size. So the machine won't work without your HDMI port. So let's uh, figure out how to fix this. So to first open up the machine, there's two screws at the uh, back end there and they're covered by these little pieces of tape so you can just uh, pry that off with a screwdriver and uh, then there are special uh, screws to uh, remove there and uh, so after we have these two screws off we will be able to take the plastic uh, casing off just uh, prying it up a little bit and it uh, folds up and then uh, slides away so that's the bottom and then the top uh, is the top left hand piece slides to the left then there are two screws underneath that we can remove to slide on slide off the plastic uh, part to the right as well you just pry up slightly and then shift to up to and to the right a little bit and then it'll take that off just to blow off some dust there these machines do get uh, dirty over time so you don't want to have any dust on the fan and all that there are uh, a couple ribbon cables that you need to remove and also a little cable that goes to the fan. And then there are the screws that hold on the metal casing to the circuit board. So we'll be removing all those screws on the bottom. I'm just using an ice cube tray to organize my screws. And there are also a, a couple different type of screws. I'm just using a black marker to identify the ones that are just the normal star screws and then the other ones uh, so I know how to re, uh, put everything back. There's this little plastic case that, that goes over the circuit as well. And then with all the screws, we'll be able to remove that metal casing. And then there's also a little casing to the right as well. I'm uh, now you can remove the hard drive there's a big screw a star screw there that you can remove and then this is a SATA hard drive that just slides out um, from the bottom there and then flipping over the machine we will have a look at the the top here this has the power supply unit so we'll also have to remove that to get the circuit board out so there's two screws at the top and the left and also to the right as well and there's also a little power connector that you can wiggle and take off. And then with that, just prying up straight up, you can remove the power supply. So that's the power supply module. And then inside you have three little cables and uh, that you can just wiggle to the left and right and then pull straight up to remove the cables. And then there's also a signal cable as well that you can just uh, pull straight up. Now, back to the circuit board, there are, there's this metal case that goes over the CPU. And then there's also the power button at the very bottom that you can remove. Then we can remove the whole circuit there. With the circuit removed, we have access to the port. Now what you want to do is use low flux solder, uh, very low melting temperature, and it's putting on each of the legs. And then, yeah, this is really important to use the low melting solder. Uh, I'm also putting some flux and the mel low melting solder on each of the pins at the back. So we just heat it up with the hot air gun at about uh, 250. And then we can remove that part just using um, a, a little prior tool there. And to seat it up and then I had it removed. After it's removed I popped on the new HDMI port and then I'm putting flux on all, each of those pins and then with the, uh, with the flux you can use a little bit of solder and then you're going to solder each of the pins to the pad there. Now if you put too much solder on your soldering iron sometimes it does form on two pins and then I'll show you a couple tricks how to fix this issue. If you have uh, two pins that join together what you can do to fix that is add some flux on the joint 
and then when you have extra flux increase the temperature of the soldering iron for a, a little bit higher and then you can pull it down and uh, remove the the flux there if that doesn't work you can use some braided uh, uh, wire to remove it as well and that works as well after soldering to the pads just go on each and just push them to the side to verify that they are all connected that the pins don't move if the pin moves then it's not a good connection there as well and uh, I, I tested all the pins and they are all a good connection to the pads so after that we can put it in put on the start button and then verify to see if we get some uh, HDMI signal and there we go you can see the PlayStation lo uh, logo work in there so we're getting the signal from the PS4 and that's how to fix the HDMI port now this repair is a uh, quite in depth there you you need some tools there I also recommend using some epoxy to glue onto that e HDMI port so that this doesn't uh, so it doesn't uh, move as well because over time ports do get jarred there so this repair does require a scope so that you can see all those pins unless you have amazing eyesight it's very small I got this from uh, Eakin's uh, uh, scope here I think it was about $200, $150 from eBay. So you don't have to buy a really expensive one. I like this one. It also has VGA out and HDMI. You'll also need some very sharp pro pins. I like these ones as well because you can change the heads from doing fine work using the scope and then this the normal head when you're just doing normal uh, repairing other things like TVs and things like that. So I highly recommend these as well. You can see, quite see the difference between these probe leads and they're pretty vital for repairing uh, very small electronics. So there we go. That's how to fix your HDMI port. Hope it's working for you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.